Hey, you're watching GearWire.com. I'm Owen O'Malley. I'm here with Ian Williams from Battles. How's it going, man? Hi. Um, so I want to talk about your stage setup and all the gear that you've surrounded yourself with on stage. Right now, I, uh, I'm playing through an RME Fireface 800, and I'm also playing through a an Apogee Duet, okay. that, which means I have two computers on stage. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. So what's like the what are the split duties between those two? Um, I'm doing looping on the uh, on an Ableton laptop, and I'm doing uh, uh, just using samples and sounds um, out of uh, main stage. In fact, on the other oh, laptop. That's what it comes with, like Logic Studios. Or? Yeah, the yeah. other laptop, yeah. and then and I'm also doing some direct live playing as well. So, okay. um, so it's a lot of switching. Uh, you know, where the guitar the gu guitar can go into either computer or I can play direct. Part, part of the idea too, the way we set up, is we've, we've always had a lot of amplifiers behind us. Yeah. And with, that gives you choice of where the sound goes. And in the idea, if we're making loops, you can actually split the layers of the loops up. You know, this amp, that amp, that amp. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. sort of breaking it up a bit. And then also, you know, musically, the way we play a lot, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of ping pong the sounds, like ba -na, ba -na, ba -na, kind of call response stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'll send it to different, you know, we'll have different amps going back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we, and also then we have the main loop amp, which we set up behind the, dr the drummer, which, so it just blares at his head. and, yeah. and, and that, he's yeah. not playing to a click or anything, no. like you guys are not. Yeah. No, I mean, the loop, the audio loop is the click, essentially, so we all hear that. So that's like his master, is like the, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So is that, that's why you're using the 800, is for the, like the multiple outputs to the different amps, the fireplace? Yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the Apogee do it. I think the Apogee, I could tell you, it, it sounds good. There's like a nice depth to that sound, I, so I appreciate it. So for the stuff out of Logic, I, I'm playing on that, yeah. yeah. So what do you, I, I didn't realize that you were running your guitar through one of those interfaces too. What, what, are, you, what are you processing the guitar with? Um, re various stuff, native instruments stuff, reactor, and also then Max on, um, in Ableton, I've Max for live, yeah, you know, right yeah. and just some, also some, just plugins uh, available in main stage, okay. and, and also live. Are you creating any of the like loops and samples sort of like live in the middle of set, or is like most of it uh, sort of yeah. prepared beforehand? Or? Yeah, we 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 make a lot of it live. A lot of it's going to happen. Yeah, a lot of it's that's sort of the whole original impetus of this band. We always it was really just about a per, the the process of building loops and maybe you know the fact that you can screw that up and make mistakes and <laughs> and then lear learning how to go with the mistakes. I mean, a lot a lot of our story is actually it's not improv, but it's adapting to mechanical failures or you know like your gear like suddenly says like no actually that's not going to happen and like you have to sort of like redirect the song and. Yeah, like we're always, it's in a, in a, we're, we kind of dance around what the gear gives us, so it does create a looseness sometimes in the structure. So uh, you were mentioning uh, before that, you know, sometimes when you have a lot of that gear, it, it doesn't cooperate with you? Was there a, a recent gear yeah. that was kind of was disastrous? Well, yeah, you, you know, there's, when you, the safety, the feeling of safety with, with all this technology comes when you play every day on tour and, you, you know, you kind of start to rely, you, you know, I've packed this up and I will unpack it tomorrow and it'll do the same thing. And you start to trust your, the, what, what kind of results you'll get and usually it, it's pretty dependable. But uh, sometimes if you book a tour in, in a way that you have to fly to the next show instead of drive with all your gear and then you have to rent oh, brand new gear and you couple that with doing a festival where there's a 20 minute changeover on the stage. And so therefore your changeover, and you don't get a sound check because it's a festival, so it's the first time you're setting up with supposedly the same gear, but things never really do what you think they're supposed to do until you tweak it and make sure, you know. Uh, and I, yeah, it was, a, it was actually a disaster. We, we said we played for about 30 seconds, 
and everything just went. I actually think, I, I think it was a, a spike. I, apparently on the soundboard, every channel went into red. Like, <laughs> and and that, they, I think, the, the only solace I got out of that was that Aphex Twin played after us, and the same thing happened to him. Oh, okay. So I actually don't think it was our fault. It was like one of those things like we didn't know what was going on. We were standing there for 20 minutes like during our set time, you know. Yeah, right. In front of a big crowd, like, just coming like, you know. Like, I, uh, yeah. how, how did that get rectified? Did you? Not really. It really no, it we finally sort of played a song and it was pretty crappy because we were so rattled at that point. Oh, no. Yeah, it was terrible. But anyway, yeah, that's the... That's the dance you do. It's a dangerous dance when you start to play with more gear than you need. Yeah, right. I don't want to say more gear than you need. Because <laughs> it's important with, with gear, I think, to only adopt gear that you need. That you think, yeah. I could really use something that will help me do this thing that I want to do. Like if you're going to put a gong behind the drums, you got to hit the gong. Yeah, you should only put a gong there if you think, uh, I really need a gong yeah. here, yeah, uh, right. rather than just that crash. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be way heavier. With the lineup change, how has the sort of division of labor in the live set changed between you and Dave? Because I'm assuming John, like, his role has basically stayed the same. Yeah, yeah. kicks their hi-hat. Yeah. Right. Crash. And the hi. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, uh, we, and we, we um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's, that, that's kind of why I, I ended up having, well, it's a good question. So I used to use Echo... We, always, we all used to use echo plexes on stage to yeah. set our loops, and you could sync those with a pulse, um, sync the looping, but I've kind of faded. The, the new album we made, The Last Drop, um, I started making the loops in Ableton, and that sort of offered a whole new spectrum of possibilities. Okay. So I'm actually now fully computer-based. Okay. I don't know. I do feel like I sort of like took over some of Ty's sonic generational aspects a, a little bit more. I, I added an extra, I, I used to have two amps behind me, now I have three amps okay. behind me. Um, Do you think that like, you know, being based in Ableton enables you to sort of take over more roles or? Yeah, you, I think you can theoretically do more. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Because on a computer, the borders are infinite. <laughs> That's excellent. Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much for your time, dude. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, have a good set. Okay.